Hey, I'm Scott. In this video, I'm going to cover how I convert my dedicated video arcade cabinet from playing one game from the 1980s to playing over 60 games of the classic arcade games from the early 1980s. I'm going to cover how I acquired my video arcade cabinet, how I at one point converted this to a main game, uh, how I had to remove the CRT monitor and replace it with an LCD panel, and then I'll talk about how I did different wiring harnesses and how I installed a new JAMA harness, and then I'll discuss these multi-game boards and the, the multi-game board that I selected that allows me to play 60 of the classic arcade games from the early 1980s such as Miss Pac-Man, Pac-Man, Galaga, Frogger, uh, Donkey Kong. I bought my arcade uh, cabinet at a local arcade auction back in 2000. Um, I bought this thing and it, the speaker was working, the marquee light was working, the controls were working, the monitor was actually working, uh, the power supply was working, and even the gameplay, the computer boards were all working. So I bought this for a staggering price of $75. The game cabinet itself was in great condition. There was no foul smells, no cigarette smoke, no water damage, no filthy that I had to remove. So it was ready to go. I put it in my house as soon as I got it home from the auction. I bought this video cabinet, not necessarily to play the game that came with it, Bad Dudes, but to convert it to a MAME system. MAME stands for Multiple Arcade Machine Emulation, where I could play hundreds of games on one cabinet. I got the MAME system all configured on a computer and shoved it inside the arcade cabinet, but it was too complicated for the boys to use. And then the monitor was going out on the system. Eventually everything just collapsed and it quit working. So I put the video arcade cabinet in the corner of the basement and it sat there for over a decade collecting dust. <laughs> MAME stands for Multiple Arcade Machine Emulator. MAME is a piece of software that actually emulates the hardware that a video game is operating on. MAME executes the game code. The game code is stored in ROMs, read-only memory. Through some of my contacts I had made when I was really hardcore into pinball machines, I had obtained about 100 of these game ROMs. So I was going to be able to play about 100 games on my MAME emulation software. All right, technology back in 2000 was a lot more complicated than it is today. So to get my main uh, system working, I had to have the arcade cabinet. I had an original arcade monitor in there. So I had to have a special software to convert the signal from a PC VGA monitor to a CRT. That required me to do a hack on a video arcade cable. In addition, I had to create a uh, way to get the signals from the buttons on the arcade machine into the computer and you did this through a keyboard and we had to hack into keyboards to send the signals into the computer. In this video I want to show you the wiring hack that I had to do back when I had my arcade cabinet set up as a main cabinet and I had a, an old-fashioned video arcade monitor or CRT in there. I had to, uh, to connect it to the computer I had to have a VGA cable, which went in the back of the computer. I had to cut off the end of it, and then I had to go to the monitor wiring harness and cut off its end connector. And then I had to splice all these wires together to, to be able to convert from C, a CRT signal 
to a VGA signal. Today you can buy a connector that does that for you. But this this was one of the hacks I had to do to get that game working. So it was a pain in the ass. And yes, I would much have rather use that new connector that it would have saved me a lot of hassle. All right, in this box, I got a, a keyboard and a massive wiring harness that I created myself. And what I'm about to show you can all be replaced today by a little bitty PCB that costs like 40 bucks. This is as small as a, a little paperback book. But what I had to do is I had to take an old keyboard. I had to pry it open. Let me get this out of the box. All right, I had to pry the keyboard. Up. So this keyboard connected to my computer. And so you played games before where you just hit the keys and it makes all the game works. Well, I had to make the keystrokes mimic the joystick and buttons on the control panel. So I had to crack this thing open and then I had to go in and wires. I had to literally get my soldering gun out and I had to solder those wires onto all the different keystrokes. And then I had to go uh, make this harness so they go up to all the buttons on the joysticks and that. And for each click of a button or the joystick up in the control panel on my arcade cabinet, it came back to the keyboard, emulated the key press, and then went into the computer and said something. So like, let's say player one's fire button was mapped to the A key. So I had to run a, a, a wire from the button one, a player one, back to this keyboard, solder it to the A, the A key, and then it would mimic when that button was pressed on the control panel that the A button was pressed, and then that would send a signal through the keyboard monitor to the computer arcade emulation software and say, oh, keystroke A was pressed, what action does that do for a specific game, S say uh, any of the gun games, and it would say fire, like Galaga, fire, and then it would fire the button. So I had, so I had to create all this wire and harness myself to emulate that. And like I said, today, that's all replaced by something called an IPAC board, and you can use your JAMA wiring harness. Well, I didn't have any of that available to me 20 some odd years ago, so I had to create all that myself. That was a pain in the ass, and that took hours upon hours to create, solder into the keyboard, hook up all the connectors, hook it up into all the, the connectors on the um, control panel, and then go into the software and configure every freaking game that the main uh, software's running. It was it was a lot of hours, a lot of headache, a lot of pain in the ass. This is the IPAC uh, PCB that I mentioned. It's used to replace that whole keyboard hack that I was talking about. It's about 40 bucks. A multi-game JAMA board is a PCB that comes loaded with more than one game on it. Uh, today, they're very common. There's a handful of them out there. They're made by IK, Elf, and Pandora. And I decided to go with the IK product. I got the 19-in-1 board and the 60-in-1 board. In this video, you keep hearing me mention the JAMA harness. The JAMA wiring harness is the standard that's used to wire all these video arcade cabinets from the control panel down to the power supply and the print circuit board for the games up to the speaker. It's all through a standard uh, wiring harness. All right, in this video, I'm just going to show you how the switches work on the different buttons on the control panel. So I've opened up the control panel and right here you'll see like this is the orange button, the yellow button, here are the buttons on the joystick. So when you push the button on the game, it's just it's pushing uh, the plastic orange uh, leg. It's going into this it's going into this switch and the switch has a ground wire and a hot wire and then that sends a signal back to the board that says the button's been pressed. And then when you get to your joystick, your joystick has four switches on it. So when you move it up, you press in one button. When you move it left, you push another switch. When you go right, you push another switch. When you go down, you press a different switch. And those switches all make a connecting connection and sends a signal back to the computer board. And it tells you, oh, player one hit button one. Player one, joystick hit the up switch. So it moves your player or fires your 
uh, weapon or whatever it does. But that's how it's controlled uh, between the user interface, which is your joystick and buttons. And through these switches and wires, it gets back to the computer board and then back to the soft, which is the hardware. And then it goes into your program, which is your software for the game. In this video, I just want to demonstrate to you what a vertical monitor is compared to a uh, horizontal monitor. In the old days in computers, your standard monitor was or horizontal. This is what a 4x3 uh, computer monitor looks like, and they were horizontal. So in a video arcade game, the 4x3, this would be a vertical monitor. So how do you get a computer monitor that's 4x3 horizontal to work in a vertical uh, video game that's 4x3? And it's simple. You just take and you rotate the monitor and now it becomes a vertical monitor. This is also called portrait mode. And if you rotate it back, you'll get landscape mo mode or ho horizontal. But that's the difference between what a vertical monitor and a horizontal monitor looks like. In this section, I'm going to show you some pictures on the process I took of removing the CRT monitor from the cabinet and replacing it with an LCD monitor. I started by releasing the control panel, flipping it forward. I then removed the plexiglass. After that, I removed the cardboard bezel from around the monitor, and that presented us with the wooden frame bezel, and I removed that too. Then that led me down to the next layer, which was the black cardboard uh, bezel directly next to the monitor. At this point, we start noticing the curvature of the monitor. The monitor actually bows about two and a half inches above the wooden frame. This is important because we'll have to add spacers whenever we replace this curved monitor with a flat LCD panel. After removing the screws that connect the uh, monitor frame to the wood chassis, we move to the back of the cabinet where we have to disconnect all these cables from the back of the monitor to the power supply and the printed circuit board. This is the most dangerous part of the entire project because you have to discharge some capacitors in the monitor. They contain large high voltage, like 10,000 volts, you got to discharge that or else you're going to get one hell of a shock, enough that it could kill you. Once the monitor and its frames are removed from the arcade cabinet, you place it in an area where you can remove all the electronics from the actual CRT. And then you free up the frame, and now you're ready to go. The frame is for a standard 19-inch monitor that's in a 4x3 ratio aspect. You might have to do some tricky maneuvering, but you got to get your LCD panel into that frame. I had to make a couple cuts on mine to allow the VGA cable and the power supply cable to come through without being pinched. I then put a piece of duct tape on the back just to keep it from moving around. It wouldn't fall out, but I just didn't want it moving around. At this point, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to get it off the bench and take it over to the cabinet and let's see how it fits. It fits pretty good. There's only one problem. It lays too flat. I gotta add some spacers to bring that monitor up about two and a half inches. So I found some two by twos in my shed and I cut them down to size. After installing all the spacer pieces, I went back to my frame and LCD panel and I reinstalled them into the hole. Now, now it all looks good. Now I'm ready to go. I'm gonna put it all back together. So I gotta put the inner bezel on, then put the wood uh, bezel on, then put the outer bezel on, put the plexiglass on, and then put the control panel up. And then I'm gonna start it up and I'm gonna play it and I'm gonna see how it works. All right, everything fired up the first time. I'm playing games, I'm happy. It's working exactly as I'd hoped. The LCD panel looks great. The horizontal games are working great. I'm playing Defender, which is one of my favorite games. I'm playing Robotron, I'm playing Joust, I'm playing Mario Brothers. I'm playing a bunch of good horizontal games, but there's something else going on in the back of my mind, something else. That something else is vertical games. I'm thinking about, hey, I'd like to get my game cabinet to play vertical games. I wonder if I can swap out my LCD panel from horizontal position to the vertical position. That way I have access to some great classic vertical games like Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man, Galaga, Frogger, Donkey Kong, Space Invaders. There's a whole bunch of classic vertical games out there I'd like to play. The first thing I did is I hooked up my 60-in-1 board that had the vertical games and I tried to play it on my horizontal monitor. And that looked like crap because it played them sideways. Then the next thing I did 
is I took a vertical monitor and I plugged it in side by side on my cabinet and then plugged in my 60 in one arcade board to see if the games would actually play on the vertical monitor properly. And they did. So then I was off. I was off to convert my horizontal cabinet to a vertical cabinet. To convert my cabinet to allow for a horizontal monitor to be placed inside of it, I had to get my jigsaw out. I had to do some measuring and I had to cut the hole. I had to go up some and I had to go down some. And this allowed me to put the vertical monitor within my cabinet. At that point, I put two more spacers on there of the two by two wood. I turned the LCD panel into the vertical position and then I installed it into the wood spacers. At that point, I was ready to put it all back together. So I put the outer bezel on, I put the wood bezel on, I put the other outer bezel on, put the plexiglass on, and I pulled up the control panel and I'm ready to play the games. All right, we're gonna look at the back side of the game, actually the inside of the cabinet. And I've taken the back door off and it gives you a lot of room to work on the game. So first thing we're going to notice is there's my monitor, my LCD panel. And that used to be a CRT that hung down right about here. It took up this whole upper upper area of the cabinet. And it was heavy. So that's out of the game. Now as we come down, you'll see there's the coin mix. And they still actually work. They came with the game when I bought it. And there's my wiring harness. You'll see the control panel, the wires, the buttons, and the joysticks. And that wiring harness, there's two of them there, one for player one, one for player two. And that comes down, and then that will hook right into that blue connector on that PCB, which is the green board, a printed circuit board. And that blue connector is called the JAMA connector for a JAMA ha uh, wiring harness. And JAMA is a industry standard for arcade ga game cabinets. So um, and then off of that, you'll see the blue connector and the blue connector is a VGA monitor signal and it comes up and that connects into the monitor. And uh, there's my monitor with the power supply and the VGA cable. And then over here to the left, this is a power supply, a switching power supply. So it has 12 volts or 110 coming into it and then 12 volts going out, plus or minus five volts going out and uh, just some ground wires. And because your electronics needs plus volts for the, for it to work. So it's got to take your 110 house voltage and bring it down. And then here is my speaker wiring harness. Uh, it's the JAMA board harness came and then I had to hack into the game cabinet wiring harness to get to the speaker, which is way up in there. So which is a pain in the rear end to get to. You can see it there. But uh, so that's pretty much all to it. Oh, and here is this is a pancake board. This is actually two printed circuit boards, PCBs, and those are the original game boards that came with the Bad Dudes cabinet from 1988. So one game took two printed circuit boards, and they were like five times the size of this one board that has 60 games on it. So that's what technology has changed in, what, 30 years? So it's pretty amazing, the difference in technology. So here we are with a much smaller, lighter monitor and a pretty circuit board that's, you know, one-tenth the size of the original board. And I get to play 60 games instead of just one game. So that's what the inside of a arcade, video arcade cabinet looks like. Quick wraparound uh, video of my arcade cabinet, Bad Dudes, it's 1988 by Data East. It's a two player game. Those are eight way joysticks and there's a total of four buttons per player. Originally that was a horizontal monitor. I modified the cabinet to allow me to put a vertical monitor in it. So. Hey, in this video, I'm going to give a quick uh, demo on it, the game menu system and how you can select the some of the 60 different games out there. 
So I'm just using a joystick to move around. That's Frogger, Galaga, and there's Miss Pac-Man. I'll select the game. And this is Miss Pac-Man. And just using the joystick, just like in a normal video game that you used to play back in the 80s. You get all the sound, the graphics, and everything that you're used to seeing. All right, this demo, we're going to choose a game from the, the menu system. Uh, this time, we're going to choose Galaga. There you go, there's Galaga, just like he played it in the early 1980s. In this example, we're going to choose a, a video game. This time we're going to choose Frogger. Just like in the 1980s. Hopefully you enjoyed this video on how I converted my dedicated video arcade cabinet, Bad Dudes by Data East from 1988, to a multi-game system that plays 60 of the classic games from the early 1980s. In this video, you saw where I converted it from a horizontal monitor cabinet to a vertical monitor cabinet. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up. If you dislike this video, hit the thumbs down. If you got any comments, leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button below, and you'll get uh, messages letting you know when I add content to my channel. All right, now that we're done with all this video and video production, it's time to play some games. Got my quarter here, time to get next. Out of my mind.